One of the strong features of Kipware Conversational is we are not only able to do standard shapes using the conversational or fill-in-the-blank forms, we're also able to do non-standard shapes through the Kipware Sketchpad. The Kipware Sketchpad is accessible either directly from within Kipware-M or you can use the desktop icon. The Kipware Sketchpad gives you the ability to either draw the toolpath directly inside the Sketchpad with a very intuitive, easy to use interface different than our complex CAD programs, or you can import a DXF file that's drawn in another CAD program and create the toolpath uh, inside of the Kipware Sketchpad, which is included standard with all Kipware conversational packages. So we not only give you the ability to do standard shapes through the fill-in-the-blank forms, but also to do non-standard shapes and DXF to G-code using the Sketchpad. In today's video, we'd like to demonstrate how we would create a G-code program from a DXF file inside the Sketchpad. So I'm going to go to the DXF import, and I'm going to get the DXF file that I would like to machine. And you can see from the shape that we have an arm take away the grid so we can see the part a little bit clearer. What we're going to do is we're going to put a rectangular piece of stock uh, into the vise. We're going to machine the contour down to within 10 or 15 thousandths of the uh, stock and then we're going to uh, turn it around, face off uh, the excess material on the top and we'll be left with an arm. In this video we're going to do just the contour though. So how do we create a G-code program from the DXF file? Well, the first thing we need to do, and basically the way the, the process works, is we need to choose the start point and the end point of the contour. So even though we have the contour completely drawn, uh, let's say we wanted to machine just up to this a particular corner, and we could do that. Uh, or in this particular case, what we're going to do is machine the whole uh, contour. So what I need to do is I need to find in the element list, I need to find the start point and the end point of the arc. So what I can do is uh, basically come into the element list and double click. And now as I scroll through uh, the element list, you can see that the elements on the screen are highlighted uh, when I over uh, put mouse over uh, that particular element. So what I want to do is I want to start in this particular corner and I want to come around the part and I want to end in this particular corner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for this element, and here it is. So if I double click, that will stop the scrolling and lock onto this particular element. And what you can see is we have a circle which is, indicates the start point of the contour. So in a machining operation, the start point of the contour also tells us the direction that the cutter is going to move. So the cutter is going to start here and move in this direction and then the software will automatically chain everything together and end up over here. So this is my start point. This is the way I want it. If, if the circle was in the wrong place, we can use the uh, reverse line direction. Uh, if I click this and then go back to that contour, you can see now that the uh, the circle is on the other side of the line. But what I want to do is uh, come back here. Okay, so this is my this is my start point. And I indicate that to the software with the traffic icon. That turns the element green to show me that this is my start point. And now I scroll through the uh, elements to find the end point of the arc. Or, I'm sorry, the end point of the contour. And again, as I said, you can stop the contour any way you want. This, I want to stop here. So I'm going to double click that and I'm going to turn that one red, uh, which is my uh, end of my contour. You can see that the circle is actually on the top of the part here, so uh, indicating the direction is this way. But because we've already told the software we want to come around this way, it'll automatically chain it together and make sure that uh, this is going in the same direction and is the end point uh, of the contour. So now that I have the starting point of the, of the contour and the ending point of the contour, I've defined the contour and the direction that I want to go. I can employ the milling conversational screen and I can give it some cutting parameters as well as some depths and coordinates to wrap it around the part. So we're going to start here with the Z coordinate of the rapid plane. I'm going to say that that's one inch above the part. Zero is the top surface and minus a half an inch is the bottom surface and then a hundred thousandths above the part to wrap it around the part. Now the sketchpad gives you the option of just writing a cycle that you can import into Kipware M 
or you can write a complete G-code program uh, using the sketchpad. So uh, if you had a non-standard shape and you didn't need any conversational operations to be done, uh, you could basically just do it inside the sketchpad, launch the sketchpad, import your DXF or make your drawing, and then create your G-code program from here. Uh, so let me show you how that's done. So we're going to click to include a tool call. We're going to include a post processor. I'm going to use my Fanuc post. I'm going to give it a work offset of G54. Uh, tool number one, height offset number one. Uh, I could use my Kipware CSF to get some uh, cutting parameters. I'm just going to input some, some parameters on my own here. Uh, 3500 RPM, uh, clockwise cooling on. Uh, we're going to use 100,000 step to cut. So we're going to go around that contour each time at 100,000 step to cut and uh, until we get that 500,000 deep. Uh, we're going to use a half inch end mill. Use a plunging feed rate, which will be out in space of 30 inches a minute, and then a cutting feed rate of uh, 25 inches a minute. I give it a program number, and I'm going to employ cutter compensation because I want to be able to have some control over the size of the part. So I'm going to use G42. Uh, I'm going to use offset 11. I'm going to use my precision down to two places, and the reason for that is that DXFs are not really the most accurate. A form of importation so uh, sometimes they round the numbers off and the automatic joining feature uh, might leave off one of the one of the elements or it might stop uh, the automatic joining at a particular point so if I lower the precision to two places uh, it'll just ensure that a DXF file will be uh, joined even though the, the numbers that are imported from the DXF file might not be all that accurate and then we need a tool approach direction, which means uh, for cutter compensation, uh, we need to be able to tell it uh, a move that's going to turn on the cutter comp. Uh, so if we remember the contour, we're going to start up in here uh, and go around the part. So I'm going to use this particular entrance. So what's going to happen is the cutter is going to start out here, uh, employ the cutter comp, and then go around the part each time. So we've got everything loaded. We're going to hit the create program. And here's our G-code program. Uh, so we're going around the contour each time, 100 thousandths deep. Uh, very easy to do just by starting, uh, selecting the starting element, selecting the element, uh, the ending element. So we've imported a DXF, found the start point, found the end point, and then just created the G-code program very quickly inside of the Kipware sketchpad. Again, the sketchpad is included standard with all Kipware conversational, so that gives you the ability to not only do standard operations with the conversational screens, uh, but also to do non-standard shapes uh, using the sketchpad and either drawing it directly or importing a DXF file.